Hello, my name is Clam Noodle Soup, and it is my pleasure to have your attention. <sighs> we made it. Today is my first day of work at the job I've been talking about for probably the past three or four months. Um, I actually knew that I had this job lined up for me ever since the beginning of this year started, but I had to take the, I had to graduate with my bachelor's degree in athletic training, I had to take and pass the BOC and get licensed in Florida and all these things, but at the end of the day, I knew that there was a very good chance of me getting this job. And the day has finally come. I'm so excited. And just before I speak any further about how excited I am, um, I just wanted to say that I'm very grateful and I feel very fortunate to have um, landed a job, especially in the middle of a pandemic when a lot of people are losing their jobs and um, where even like the next week's expenses or next month's expenses are up in the air for a lot of people. Feels good to have your hard work pay off. It really just feels amazing to have all your hard work pay off. Maybe I should show what I'm wearing because what athletic trainers get to wear is so much fun because boy, I put zero thought into my outfits. I have my shirt on under here just for my own privacy. I'm not really gonna show it because it has the high school logo, the high school symbol, like, and the high school name right on the front. So this is my athletic training jacket. I got it when I was a first year athletic trainer, athletic training student at the University of Central Florida. This jacket is a rain jacket and it's a little bit warm, not too warm, but you know, I don't wanna wear any of my other jackets because they're all crazy colors. And then athletic trainers do wear khaki pants. It's kind of our trademark, to be honest. And then just Adidas running shoes. Keys to the entire school. Not the entire school, but all of the doors that I need to unlock, the keys are right here. I've done orientation, but this is the first day that I'm actually working, the first day that I'm getting paid for, and I'm gonna be going there completely alone. It's a clinic day, and there's a good chance that I might not even see any patients today, so, I mean, I would love to see some patients because I do what I do because I love working with people and I love, you know, providing healthcare to my patients. I don't wanna just sit in the athletic training room doing nothing. I wouldn't anyways. I plan to read and brush up on my skills um, when there's like a lot of downtime. My shift is from 10 to 12 p.m. and this is the only day of the week that I'm working and then next week I work Monday and Tuesday. So two days a week. That's like the sweet spot. So I'm predominantly gonna be working either one, two, maximum two days a week and I believe I get paid like $282 every other week. So that's not, <sighs> this is the sad thing about athletic training is the pay is not like what you would expect from someone who is a licensed healthcare provider. But the reason why I wanted to take this job is because I am one, working with my mentor. I've been working with this specific person who I have so much respect for and I'm really grateful for. I've been working with him ever since I was in the 10th grade. So however old you are, like 14 or 15 years old, and now I'm 22. And we've stayed in contact throughout all of these years. He's helped me get into the athletic training program that he graduated from. And the second athletic trainer that I'm working with, so there's three of us at the high school, um, that's his best friend. And they were in the same class at the athletic training program that they went to, which is the same athletic training program that I went to. So we're all UCF alumni. It's just a big conglomerate of a family and I'm so excited. <laughs> Despite the pay, another reason why I wanted to take this job is because I want to stay sharp on my medical skills. I don't want to lose all that I have learned over the past two years. Like I really am trying to hold on to all of this knowledge because I know that it would help me in medical school. I know that it's going to be an amazing thing to put onto my medical school application and talk about in interviews if I'm given the chance to talk about it in interviews. And uh, I like I don't want to just have gotten a bachelor's degree in athletic training and completely just not use it at all and go get a job that t potentially could pay more, like becoming a bartender or a, a server at a nice restaurant. I am very certain that there are so many bars or so many restaurants in Orlando that could pay me more than the job that I currently have. 
but sometimes, especially when this is not my career, I'm trying to build my career, I'm trying to get into a program, medical school, um, I would rather take less pay, more knowledge, better chance of getting a high quality letter of recommendation from two athletic trainers who I really do respect and just the fact that it's really close to my house and the fact that I'm going to be able to continue using my skills, that is way more valuable to me than possibly getting an extra couple hundred dollars on top of the around 500 that I'll be getting with this job. So it's just some things that I had to think about and it's not like I'm sad by any means. I'm actually very excited and very happy and sometimes life will throw these uh, questions, these situations, these puzzles that you have to figure out and you have to end up making the best decision for you at the end of the day. And I 100% feel in my heart that I made the best decision for myself. So it is time for me to leave. I'm giving myself 15 minutes just so I can get there about 10 minutes early. And I will check back in after I've had my first day of work. I'm not gonna lie, I feel a little self-conscious that my background is kind of messy. And my couch is right there, and there's just so much laundry on my couch. Oh my god. <laughs> but I was preoccupied with uh, a busy week where I had finals week, I had my first day of work, and that was today. And um, yeah, now I have time to like really get into my responsibilities for the next three weeks until I have class yet again. It feels so good to know that I am getting paid to do what I have done for the past, I don't even know, six years of my life for completely free. <laughs> I'm getting paid! Phenomenal first day of work. I'm gonna be very honest with you, today was only clinic hours, so, and uh, high school has not started yet in the state of Florida, so no athletes came in, no patients came in, however, I'm using this as a really amazing opportunity to very much get acquainted with the setup and the layout of the athletic training room. Well, I'm actually familiar with the setup and the layout because this is the exact high school that I, I graduated from and for three years I was a part of the student aid. So I know the layout of that athletic training room inside and out, but the things aren't in the exact same places, so I'm just getting acquainted to where things are, so if someone comes in, I'm not like, uh, where is everything? Because then in the patient, that is like one of the greatest ways to make sure your patient does not have confidence in you, is to like be second guessing yourself and not know where something is. And I don't want that to happen, so we're gonna play athletic training room scavenger hunt for the next three shifts because that is how many shifts I have until school does begin and I anticipate having a lot more athletes, a lot more patients at that time. I will say that um, the other athletic trainer I'm working with, it feels so weird because in my eyes he's my boss, but technically he isn't, but there's definitely a hierarchy of athletic trainers. He's higher up. He came in and he's like, listen, my shoulder's been hurting. And I thought this was kind of like a mock to see if my evaluation skills were on point. I treated it like it was real. And then halfway through, he started laughing and then I started laughing and he's like, I'm laughing, but I actually really am hurt. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, let me just actually, you know, finish this then. I'm very happy with how I got through that evaluation, considering the fact that I have not evaluated an athlete, I have not evaluated a patient in like three months. I thought I was going to be second guess guessing myself and stumbling over my words and forgetting like SAM, PLE, OPQ, RST, forgetting all those things, but I covered my bases. Uh, I gave him my diagnosis and he's like, yeah, I agree with you. I just wanted to know what your opinion was. And I was like, you want to know what my opinion is? And um, our two schools of thought were in the same boat. So that's reassuring. And oh, I mean, not for him because his shoulders not looking so good, but it's reassuring that my knowledge is there. For the rest of the day, I am going to do some medical school administration, administrative stuff. So there is something called, let me just like make this little, a little update, first day of work and a little update with where I'm at. 
in my studies. There is something called the fee assistance program, which pretty much helps you, from my understanding, I need to read more in depth about what exactly it entails, but the fee assistance program helps with the cost of the MCAT and the study material for the MCAT. And it also helps with the application process to medical school because that mess is expensive. Mess is very expensive and I don't want to completely, I mean, I don't even know if I'd be able to f afford it if I had to do it on my own. W my family, we would make it work, but that would be like a very big struggle. So I'm gonna apply to the fee assistance program so I don't have to be in a state of constant anxiety that I wouldn't be able to apply to medical school literally only because of financial reasons. It sucks, unfortunately, that's the way that things work. Things cost money. Can you imagine? I was looking at how much it costs it's like $170 for your first application and then $40 for every application after that. And you're supposed to kind of play a numbers game where you're not just gonna apply to two medical schools because there's a great chance you're probably not going to get in. Well, I don't wanna say all of that and like make people nervous, but usually people are applying to 20 and 30 different medical schools and I want to apply to around 20 to 30. Maybe it'll be 25, maybe it'll be 23, maybe it'll be 28 depending upon you know where I want to go and the states that I want to live in and all of these different things I have to take into consideration but that would be upwards of you know a couple thousand dollars included um, like a couple thousand dollars banking on the fact that you're probably gonna get secondaries right you're gonna oh, cross my fingers gonna get secondary applications and then you actually have to go interview I think some interviews can be done through Skype but a lot of them are done through you know, actually going there and traveling is expensive. We are keeping on a roll. I feel like I am just not checking off boxes in the way that pre-meds check off boxes, but I feel like I keep checking boxes. I feel like I keep making a step towards the right direction when it comes to my goals. The MCAT is right around the corner. I'm about to sit down and make my MCAT study schedule. I'm gonna film that process because I am going to throw myself into an organized conglomeration of physics, chemistry, organic chemistry, biology, and biochemistry, and kind of like treat it as a job, but I wanna get into that in that video. I am going to reach out to some doctors soon because I need to shadow soon. My timeline is I will be applying next year, so in 2021. I am so excited. I honestly, sometimes I can't sleep at night because I'm just like, Oh, it's around the corner. Um, <laughs> I'm so nerdy, but it works for me, so I don't care. That's going to be it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope that wherever you are, you are working towards your goals, you are not making any excuses, and you are not letting anything negative that anybody has to say about your goals come in between you and reaching them. And if someone is speaking out of the side of their neck, spewing some negativity towards your way, let me get their phone number because I want to have a chat with them. Knock some sense into them. <laughs>